All right, so this morning we continue the most noble quest you can have in Rune Terra, which is pairing everyone's, and especially my favorite champion, with every other champion possible just so we can see all the places she fits. So Zoe's an incredibly flexible champion, 1-1 one, one, elusive for one. When she hits the opponent's nexus, she makes us this super cool star chart that invokes a celestial that costs three or less. A lot of really good utility cards in these celestial cards that cost three or less. Everything from challenge units, help us control the board, silence effects, stun effects to evasive threats like the trickster up top. Um, the super cool star chart that she makes also helps level her up. When you play 10 differently named cards, she levels. And then the idea behind this deck, one of the reasons why we're pairing her with Quinn today, is that she says, when I level up, grant um, all of your allies keywords whenever you play an ally with a keyword. So in addition to Quinn, we're also playing Grizzled Ranger and Elmheart as ways to have Zoe give the entire team scout. Past that, I've got uh, Sparklefly Mentor as just good cards that pair with Zoe. Some Combat Tricks and Pale Cascade and Mountain Goat as an early blocker. And then at the top end of our curve, we've got those ones I just talked about, as well as things like Concerted Strike and Sunforger to give us some sustainability against uh, decks trying to get under us. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games with Zoe Quinn here today and see how they feel. I put together Zoe Heimer deck similar to the video you posted and it was super fun. Yeah, Zoe Zoe Heimer was my highlight video today and I enjoyed it a lot on deck sweet. That one, that one made it back into the queue that we're gonna play again sometime soon. You ever play Shiriko? I picked it up, I guess. I didn't get enough anger and frustration from Dark Souls. No, I'm, I'm not a big fan of games that make, games that make you feel bad as a feature of the game aren't, uh, Aren't really something I'm into, he says, as he plays a card game. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mulligan. I guess I keep my own plaza. I'm gonna mulligan the rest of these looking for ones and twos, though. Yeah, I think when, when I say we're gonna pair Zoe with every champion, that's like obviously an exaggeration. There's some, some corner cases where she's just not not going to work. Um, things like Vlad and Maokai, for example, are good, good examples of that. So I don't really mind games that are challenging as a feature. The thing that I don't like that people have, have assured me is a feature of Dark Souls games that I dislike, and I've talked about this before, is Dark Souls style games are what I like to call games that don't respect your time. So I don't I don't mind a game being challenging and making me master mechanics or specific parts of gameplay to get past something. What I dislike is when games repeat make you repeat parts you have already mastered in order to get back to the part you failed at. So as a, as a clear, concise example of what I'm talking about, I really dislike when a game makes you lose at a boss, and then instead of restarting you at that boss, you then have to go back and rerun the 20 minutes before that boss to get back to the boss to then actually try the part that you failed at again. So I don't, I don't mind failure and making you learn and get better as a game as a game mechanic i think that's actually interesting and good but i dislike the your punishment for failing is you have to repeat a bunch of stuff you actually succeeded at before you can get back to the part that you actually failed at sure that then uh, Shukriyo might actually be an okay game. A lot, a lot of people have like incorrectly assumed that like I just don't like games that are hard, and that's definitely not my position. My position is I dislike games that bullshit my time. I'm I'm an adult with children. I don't I don't need to be put into a 20 minute video game timeout because I failed at part of the video game. Just let me retry the part that I failed again to see if I can get better at it. I think we're just dropping Plaza here so we can kill their Lucian next turn. This turn's gonna be real bad for us though. I mean, I definitely prefer um, single player story driven games the most out of everything. 
That's definitely my number number one style of game that I enjoy. Hey, Lobster, thanks for the raid. Hope you had a good stream this morning. I think we're actually gonna hush the Lucian here. It saves us a ton of damage, and it means he's not leveled up, so that way we can kill him next turn, and they won't have a leveled Lucian in the tank. So, taking a bit of a hit here. Morning, Evere, just getting started. Catch game one, game one of the day. The strength of the sun and my faith are one. Sure is dark, eh? You should really pay more attention. I mean, is it really sub only mode if you're sending a message with channel points? Think of it. Think of it as you're in super slow mode. I know expand expanding your mind past what it says on the on the on your screen and thinking about context isn't Twitch's strong suit, but I I promise you if it was sub only mode you wouldn't be able to send a message. <laughs> Thanks for the sub gift, Div. Well. So we get to do this, and then maybe we get to kill this next turn? Should play Hellblade sometime or Outlast? If you check out my website, under the video section, there's a variety playthroughs tab. Hellblade's a game we've already played. I agree that the game is very good. Oh, you have to run past a bunch of enemies. Yeah, I still think that's pretty tedious. I don't, I don't under, especially if you're gonna give me the ability to just run past a bunch of the enemies. Why wouldn't you just let me, why wouldn't you just let me respawn at the boss from the start? What was it? It was the, the new Spider-Man game, Miles Morales, did a really good job of, it had checkpoints inside the different stages of the bosses too. So like if it was like a three or four stage boss and you died on stage two, it didn't even make you replay stage one. It just loaded from where you were at at the start of stage two, which was great. I really like that from a game design perspective. All right, we got to kill their champions, which is like, okay-ish. There's a harrowing in our future. We're probably gonna be, probably gonna die. Hey, thanks for the tier two and for 19 months, Hamblin. I appreciate that, welcome back. There's a tangible loss to dying. It makes fights more tense and intense. But, yeah, I don't know. Teach, teach their own. Listen, I don't understand things like BDSM, but if that's if that's your kink, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shame you for it. I'm just, I guess I guess I'm not I'm just not into getting punished casually. Different different strokes. We have been very good at hitting Crescent Strike so far. You are not wrong. Should we take four from a shark here? Oh, we're dead, because Hecarim's looking. Yeah, it'll do big. This type of matchup seems pretty impossible for us. I don't think we have the tools to get under them and our interaction in the form of Plaza isn't super meaningful against all of their, all of their ephemeral units. 
feels like when they have it feels like when they have plaza in play they're a much better plaza deck than we are natter jack thank you for the 31 months in the two tier two rqr master x 85 with the 60 month resub that is that is an incredible amount of time five entire years you're one of the the first and the few that gets a jester hat as your as your sub icon. Welcome, welcome back, Master X. Yeah, I, I agree, Violet Journey. Plaza Plaza is definitely a card that tends to remove some player agency from the person who's on the other side of it. How long has my channel been active? Uh, my Jeff Hoagland account was created in May of 2012. I started streaming, uh, when I started streaming, so minus five years is 2016. I probably started streaming like 2014 or so. For people that are new to the channel, I don't enjoy playing against Zoe Leeson, so I don't play against it because life's... Hey, remember, remember that conversation we were having about games that punish you and playing games for fun? I don't, I don't play against decks that I find unfun, which is in this current format is actually only Zoe Leeson. How does quarantine time work for subbing? Are people who subbed in March 2020 still on one month sub anniversaries? Asking the real question. I shared, um, probably keep Blinding Assault actually in case they have an early Zoe on a mulligan the Quinn, so it's a little bit slow. Um, I saw a tweet came across my feed where it was like, still recovering from March 2020, and there's another March coming up in five weeks. If Riot decides to nerf the Lee Sin deck by adjusting cards that aren't actually Lee Sin only, I'm going to be very disappointed. I'm I'm hoping, like, based on, like, how they've balanced and designed their game so far, I feel like their designers are smarter than that. But that would be, that would be a pretty big letdown for me personally if they identified the other parts of that deck as being the problem and Lee Sin being fine. I think that would be a pretty big deviation from what makes Rune Terra good on average. So I, I actually think, and I've talked about this on stream before, I think if you wanted to change Zoe, I think there's a chance that changing Zoe could be justified. Um, I, I would make super cool star chart cost three, I think would be, would be my recommendation. But if Zoe is the only thing that changes in Lee Sin, for, for the record, I'm not opposed to changing Zoe. I would be opposed to the idea that Zoe is the problem with Lee Sin and is the only thing that needs to change though. Like if they, if they adjust Lee Sin, if they... If they don't adjust the Le lease it as a card, I will likely continue conceding to that deck on site even into the next batch. It just doesn't generate games that I find interesting or fun. Which is which is fine. Like that was something we did in Magic with some frequency too. My my idea of fun is different than other people's idea of fun on occasion. And I just skip games that I don't enjoy. Maka Art, thank you for the tier three. That is absurdly generous to you. Thank you for the seven months. Yeah, and that's Magic. Ma when I was doing that in Magic, Magic had a ton of decks that would qualify as we're skipping this because it's unfun. So I actually think here, I'm gonna go ahead and play Mentor and Blinding Assault this turn, and then we'll open attacks with Blinding Assault into the Shyvana with the, with the grand bonus. At least in synergy with gems is the main problem, maybe. I think, the, I think the fact that, no, no, I, I don't, I just, not even maybe, I disagree with that. The problem with Leeson is very simple. A card that can combo kill you from 20 to zero in one turn should not have built-in protection. That's, that's the problem full stop. 
Anybody, anybody telling you there's any other problem with the deck is very wrong in my opinion. That should, that should just be a hard and fast rule. You don't get built-in protection if you're also going to combo kill me in one turn. Pick, pick one. You don't get to do both. Robo Snake Cave. Thank you for the 15 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Getting a hush out of their hand on my Valor seems like a huge win for me overall. It is, it is terrible. It's bad, it's bad game design in my opinion. Rune Terra is full of really good game design and I like a lot of choices they make, but to call, to call a spade a spade, the current, the current Lee Sin deck is bad game design in my opinion. It just shouldn't be something that you're allowed to do. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. The attack with this, we're probably going to repost and block. Which is another reason why it's nice if we got rid of their, uh... We got rid of their, what's it called already? Their hush? I'm going to go ahead and pass here if they want to burn our mana. I'm fine with that. Carry Pot, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. I did play Portal 1, yep. Yeah, you can find that up on my YouTube channel. It was just a single video because Portal 1's pretty short overall. It was like, uh, like less than two hour playthrough. Witness my true power. You know, block with Goat to play around second hush. I don't know. Again, like... Them using a hush there, is that strictly bad for me? Like I have I have this to follow up to eat this with this turn. Just open like this support here to try and keep this alive. Mm, we could have quinned into Valor. Yeah, that's that's bad against a pump spell though, Lampton. Like they're probably playing Pale Cascade and or Sharp Sight, right? So no, I don't I don't think Quinn's a consideration there because once Shyvana's leveled, I need to commit to killing it. I think I think if the Shyvana if the Shyvana hadn't leveled, um I think we'll see Lee Sin go back to six mana. I also think that would be an incredible failure. I think I think simply doing a stat line adjustment to Lee Sin shows that they don't understand the actual problem with the card. And that would be that would be a big miss in my opinion again. I'm gemming this for now, so this way I can concerted strike this and keep it alive. Uh, February third. A good command to have. My light shines. Yeah, I agree with Guard Gray as well. I also think at six mana, it will probably, probably still see play and it will definitely still be toxic.
These are all scout units, so we're gonna get to attack again here. Razi, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel this morning. Lifesteal unit first. Uh, I'm not hitting their nexus for anything, so lifesteal first doesn't really matter. I'm going to gem this. So that way if they have a plus two attack card here, they can't trade this for it. this. Maybe I'm supposed to triple gem gen uh, Elm Heart here. Could be could be right to triple gem the Elm Heart there. Fortunately, just passing here, we'll play Quinn out next turn. The copies do count towards Lux, Brad. Yeah, uh, what's it called? Karma. Karma Lux was a deck back in the... Uh, early days of the game, I'm told. What God of War am I starting? The most recent one. gonna add update the command to say to say what it really should say which is that people are asking why are we the the not the non subs sending a message asking why the chat is in sub only mode is like a fantastic example of peak twitch chat come on come on exercise some critical thinking skills i know i know it's early but i believe in you you can do it And friend, thanks for the two months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. You're having a wonderful morning wherever you're at. I am Zoe. What's your name? So, like, we're ahead on board at the moment, but our opponent has a bunch of cards in hand, and we're basically empty at this point. Sending up to be Shillionaire 2X does not satisfy my need for immediate gratification. Let's bump Ashview RS. Sounds good, dude. Light. I'll get that moved up after I'm done today. Thanks for the sub gift, Niv. I appreciate it. I'm going to hush this because we can kill them on open attacks here next turn. That's unfortunate. I think we're probably dead at this point. And this is and this is about what I expected to happen. Like I mentioned, we are mostly out of cards. So far, our decks felt pretty mediocre. It it our deck feels like it's trying to do mid rangey things similar to Zoe Lux, but it doesn't have the same staying power into the mid to late game that Zoe Lux has. Quinn, Quinn off the top would have been the best draw. I already threw two Quins this game though, right? I believe. I'm 
The hand is truly outrageous. You're not, you're not wrong. I mean, assuming my opponent with six cards in hand had no play there and I have Hearthstone Lethal is like super ambitious. But yeah, I don't, I don't think comparing us to Misfortune Scouts is a good comparison, Navier. That's why I didn't make it. This deck, this deck feels much more like it's trying to be mid-rangey slash controlling with the cards it's playing while also not be having card advantage to do exactly that. No, I'm not, I'm not taking magic deck submissions. And when I, if I do take magic deck submissions, I'm not quite sure what I would price them at. If I, if I, if, if magic goes okay and I do take deck submissions, I might price them above $30. Like, I think there's a chance magic has changed enough that I can find decks that I want to play and still have a good time, but I would be, I'd be pretty surprised if their standard format is in a place where I can take random viewer submissions and still have fun. <laughs> Did your mom walk into Dan's table? Oh, who's a good baby girl? playing this but i'm playing zoe asel here so the question is do i want to play blinding assault this turn i think i do and just push damage shiny side duck thank you for the year and a half i appreciate that welcome back keeping me around all right so with this play i'm gonna attack with both but i'm gonna trade this we're to give up our scout attack I'd rather rather trade my non-scout 2-1 than my scout 2-1 here. I'm going to go ahead and drop Plaza here, and then next turn we can drop Mentor of Stones. Does Watsy give me cards as a creator? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't, Wizards of the Coast doesn't even give their professional, Wizards of the Coast doesn't even give their professional players that they pay a salary to play magic in their tournaments free cards. They, they ring every penny possible out of every customer possible. In fact, it was really funny. MTG Arena's card acquisition system is so convoluted and awful that their literal world champion at one point made a post on Twitter because they didn't understand how to acquire the cards they needed to acquire on Magic Arena. Now, life, lifetime, I've spent, um, I've spent lifetime north of four thousand dollars buying Magic Arena cards. And like, you know, for I know, I know, like when I say I've spent four thousand um, dollars on Arena cards, that sounds like a lot. But like to to give context to that number to like explain why I spent that much money, um, 
every month that I've stopped playing Magic Arena, I've lost approximately that much money in income playing Rune Terra instead of Magic Arena. So like, it's it's a business expense and it it pays for itself. But like, even if I hush this, this is a 5-4 and they'll still trade. So I think I just Pale Cascade. So like when when other people like people often wonder like people are like well why do other magic creators play if they dis if they dislike if they dislike I mean to be fair Dorian Costly I never defended Arena's economy in saying that it was good I defended Arena's economy saying it was better than Magic Online and Paper Magic which is still true it's still less shit than their other models that they've used previously. But there's there's a difference between being less shit and being actively good, and Rune Terra's economy is actively good. Yeah, yeah, I get I get to write off money that I spend on games like Rune Terra and Arena on my taxes at the end of the year. And for people that aren't familiar with the convoluted jargon nightmare that is U.S. tax law, that doesn't mean that the purchases that I make are free. It basically means I'm not taxed on the money that I spend on them, which in effectiveness basically means it's like getting a 25 to 30 percent discount on my purchases, depending on what my effective tax rate for the year ends up being. Give you to give you some insight into the economies of being a creator. I think we're just taking the pass here. We'll burn two mana. And then we'll play double Grist Ranger next turn and get to attack their board down. Howdy, ARN. Good morning. Uh, my taxes actually went down under the GOP and Donald Trump's tax changes. As a, as a human being that is capable of empathy and giving a shit about my fellow humans, when I voted to put the Democrats in power, I voted for a tax increase on myself. Because... Having a society that provides benefits for other human beings is a good thing for society overall. You're covered. All right, so now we're not attacking with this into the barrier, but I think we ship this into here. Let's go ahead and eat this. Could have, I could have attacked in and hushed, I guess, but using a hush to break a barrier seems real mediocre here. I think, I think we're playing this out. Uh, Orionel, to be to be fair, we're gonna play we're gonna play some magic on Thursday as a heads up. If you didn't see my YouTube post, <laughs> Crab Shroom, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, I also, I mean, I also just like under understand basic basic economics and I'm capable of reading reading case studies that have been done, Ryan. And like, I understand the reality that like every dollar you invest into things like 
the like eradicating po poverty and homelessness and things like that is money that comes back to a community twofold, right? Like not only is it the morally right thing to do, but it's also in actuality, the fiscally responsible thing to do to help other people in the society with which we live because those those things, those expenses actually benefit society as a whole. Hyphenated, thanks for the follow, and Prismatox. For people that are new, like those follows, welcome to the channel. Um, as you probably have gained the inkling of from the discussion for the last the last couple of minutes, uh, we talk about politics on occasion on stream. I would describe myself as uh, aggressively progressive. I vote I vote Democratic in the United States, but I definitely align personally more with people like Ocasio Cortez and Bernie Sanders than people like Joe Biden. But I also I also understand the reality of what what my options are with regards to things. So I'm a very very realistic type person. Uh, silence is probably good here. They're gonna have some type of unit next turn, and we can wipe the challenger off it again. Just kind of experiencing the same thing we saw in the last game, where like we haven't quite had enough pressure to run them down, and we've gotten to this late game where we don't have any card advantage to speak of. Jack, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're not, our deck seems to be incapable of consistently getting underneath what our opponents are doing while simultaneously also not having the ability to go late. So we're silencing this just as an attempt to save our things. There's a good chance they play something else here. Yeah, Plaza Plaza is a pretty good example of a high variance card, and it's actually uh, Swim Swim had a really good video on this where he talked about how um, Targon's Peak is a card that's gotten a lot of uh, largely unjustifiable flack in the community for being a variance card. When in reality, cards like the Grand Plaza are also very high variance cards, even if they don't explicitly say the word random on them. It's a, it's a card that's awful in multiples, but you want to play a number of them so you can draw them early consistently. So I gemmed this so it can attack into this profitably. We'll trade this here. If they block here with this, this the challenger this generates will have enough power to finish off Aesol. And again, like, we're almost at parity on board, and then you look at their hand and realize how many cards they have, right? Can we kill them here? All right, we have Hearthstone Lethal. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Hey, tech, tech, technically not hush. Okay. So like, again, we get to stabilize the board, but our opponent has five cards in hand. And I have a gem. <laughs> Johnson, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel this morning. I mean, all things considered, this is probably one of the better draws of my deck.
Quinn? No. Quinn? Let's try it. Let's try one more, but I think I'm about ready to retire this. Move along, move along to our next deck idea. For people that are new to the channel, you'll see we have a few different deck names listed in the stream title. Every day, I usually tend to play two to three different Rune Terra decks or more. The, the deck names in the stream title are decks I'm intending to play today in the order in which I'm intending to play them. If you want to see what those decks look like before we get to them on stream, there's a stream queue on my website. You can see the decks for the current day listed towards the top. And still not playing against Lee Sin, so we'll take a we'll take a do over. Tank that tank that MMR. Spike it, spike that MMR all the way into the ground. We have 100 percent target decks so far today. Definitely two Lee Sin to two Demasi Plaza. It'll be interesting to see in the balance patch next week if they elect to tone some Targon things down or if they elect to um, increase the power level of other regions. Sand's great, right? You get to go Zoe on one into Bank Spell Mana on two into Plaza Blinding Assault on three. Or both. Yeah, both could be fine for sure. Hush. Hush has been a hotly contested card in the community since it was printed. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing a change to Hush if they also make changes to Fiora and Lee Sin. I think I think changing Hush while leaving Lee Sin and Fiora how they are though would be a pretty big mistake. I feel like I feel like Hush is a safety valve that you need while those things are as powerful as they are. I think, I think it's pretty unlikely that I level Zoe here against their aggro deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this trade early. What do you think needs to change with Hush? I think it should probably just cost three mana. I think, I think its effect is very comparable to Flash Freeze, and Flash Freeze costs three for a reason. I think two, two mana is just a little too efficient. One of, I, I also think though, one of the reasons why we see so much hush and one of the reasons why Targon as a whole feels overbearing is that like, it's awkward that Hush is the best answer to Lee Sin, and Lee Sin also gets to play Hush. When when the best answer to something is playing that thing, it's usually in an awkward spot. Pale should also cost three man. I think that's I think I disagree with that take. I think I think Pale Cascade's pretty in line with the other various combat tricks we have in the game. I think it's very, very comparable to Sharp Sight. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely in the pale is fine camp personally. We take Charger here. It's gonna be kind of sweet with this. Do we Grizzled Ranger or do we Sparkle Fly and start gaining some life back? I'm gonna Grizzly Bear here. You know, honestly, I'm just going to take this pass. 
Am I? I have I have concerted strike. Not leveled yet. And I think I need to pressure them. I don't know that I can take this pass here. That's true. We might we might get another pass after we play this. While, while I think rolling, I, there's there's two parts to your question. Do you think they should revert Will of Iona back to four mana to give more options for Fiora and Lee? So one, reading your statement again, are you asking, you think Will of Iona gives counterplay against Lee Sin and Fiora, or you want those decks to be able to play Will of Iona? Because the answer is both will happen. Similar to how Hush is the best answer to Leeson now, but Leeson also plays Hush. Like, Fiora and Leeson are both um, Ionia decks, right? So, like, if you, if you make that change, you're giving those decks tools. You're giving those decks tools. I'm going to block with this, but I'm also going to Concerted Strike. Yeah, yeah, I think I think overall the largest issue with Hush in the current format is definitely related to the fact that Hush is the best answer to the offensive threats that we have at the moment. And it's it's really more deserves more of a nuanced metagame discussion rather than Hush is too good, so much as so more so as looking at the format as a whole and asking what is going on in the format that makes Hush good. Why why is it good? And while again, I wouldn't shed any tears if Hush cost three mana, I don't think making Hush cost three mana actually fixes the fundamental problem that's going on. I think I think it's the easy answer, so it's the one a, a lot of people have knee-jerk reacted to and said, oh, Hush is the problem, when, reality, when in reality, in my opinion, it is the actual context of what's good and why Hush is a must-play card. President Noggin Fogger, thanks for the follow. And Brayden, welcome to the channel. Daddy Faron. We're just we're just gonna concern and strike him, right? I mean, the next major balance patch isn't that far off, right? It's like nine days from now. Yeah, it's nine. It's nine days from now for a friend. It's February February third, we get a Felios and the balance patch. Is this card Noxian Fervor? It is. I still get to trade this here, but it's going to overwhelm me for four. They will notably not have enough mana to, um, they will notably not have enough mana to double decimate me next turn, so they should be dead. Nothing gets between me and my mark. Thinking about Runeterra doing an early access event for streamers like Wizards of the Coast has, I think it's unnecessary. I think just letting everybody play with the cards right away is fine. Your king has returned. Dead men tell my tale. Alright, so they're dead, right? Still steady I didn't even mean to play that right. Yeah. This uh this camp block.
Yeah, I think I think I, I for for reference, if you if you said Jeff, what's your giant list of changes you would make in a big balance patch? I would probably undo a number a number of the Ionia nerfs that they did in recent memory. A lot of a number of the Ionia nerfs that they did pre Targan could probably be probably be undone. But again, at the same time, I also think I would adjust Leeson and Viora. Honest, honestly, I think the best change to Fiora is probably making her ultimate not be an instant coup de gras. I think I think I would like to see Fiora change to when she gets her fourth kill, she does like 10 or 15 damage to your your opponent's nexus as opposed to just winning the game outright. It would it would let them keep all of their animations the same, but it would give the card more counterplay. So like if you can keep your life total above a certain line, you don't just lose outright. And like if you look at a lot of the games that Fiora decks play, like they're still gonna win with Fiora on her fourth kill in a lot of situations, anyways, because they're pressuring they're pressuring their opponent's life total as they go. I think, I think, yeah, I think, I think a, t a tenor would be where I would start. Have her, have her deal ten when she, uh, when she ults. Correct, Violet Trudy. It would, that's exactly what it would do. It would, it would make the all-in Fiora decks worse, which I think is a net positive, because I think the all-in Fiora decks are pretty toxic. Opponent here letting us know that they're an aggressive deck, prioritizing killing my Sparklefly over my Zoe, which makes sense. So we'll bank a spell mana here. We'll go up to four. We'll get to play Grand Plaza and bank a third spell mana, which sets us up into Sunforger plus Star Chart the following turn. No, probably not. Look, Steve, I think it would just be a, a ten, a ten and done once she kills four things. I think I want to play this this turn so I can work on leveling her up because I, I need to start on this so I can get that sun that that uh, daybreak trigger. Sure, ten ten every four kills, fine. Sure, that could that could be a way to do it too. Have it do five damage per kill every kill after. If it was if it was like less than ten, having it damage every kill would be fine. I think that's also also a reasonable choice. Okay, so I actually want to flip these. So this way, if they have Mystic Shot to kill this, the Twisted Fate still dies, because killing Twisted Fate this turn is pretty important. Yeah, this just, this just happens in first. So I gave up a point of Overwhelm damage here, but I tried to guarantee the Twisted Fate kill, so I think it's a worthwhile exchange. Hey, thanks for the year and a half, Turtle. I appreciate it. Welcome back. No, they haven't. So we're just spitballing. So actually, one one thing, and I'm sure I'm sure that this is because of the holidays. The like their whole this was their first holiday season post Rune Terror release. Because remember, I know I know the last year has felt like a decade, but Rune Terra's even if you count open beta, Rune Terra has only been out of open beta for the general public to play for a calendar year at this point. But generally speaking, 
the Rune Terra devs communicate with us a bit better about what they're intending to nerf potentially. And this is this is definitely the first patch since I started playing that we're pretty in the dark at what they're looking at in general. Charger sounds great. Yummy. Thank you for the two years support. Has been forever. Welcome back. So we're going to take a little bit of a hit here and then next turn Plaza is going to do Plaza things and murder their board. No, I think it's 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 definitely because because they had a holiday break. And like for for the record, the fact that they gave all of their employees a real break over the holidays is a big positive in my mind for them as a company. Treating treating their employees like real human beings is a good thing. That's not something all companies do. I say 2020, despite the fact that 2020 will likely have its own dedicated history classes devoted to it, it actually is not, is not its own decade in and of itself. I think I'm supposed to kill this rather than this. This might be playing a little bit with fire and it might be right to prioritize killing zap here yeah they've got they've got six points here so burble burble fishes and get excited to kill us here hush is the best draw on our deck i think Mystic shot for lethal. Uh, rank reset. Um, rank reset isn't for a while, right? It's like the end of, it's like the end of February, I believe. History 101, Ancient History, and History 2028, yeah. So, this was a build-around submission for Zoe plus Scout cards. I built it as Zoe plus Quinn. Um, another direction I could have gone is I thought about building Zoe plus, um, plus Bilgewater cards, because there are some, like, Razor Scale Hunter and Island Navigator. Um, over, overall, this build felt pretty mediocre to me. I think the, the best way to summarize the issue with what this deck was doing was that um, it didn't have the tools to consistently be aggressive, like something like Misfortune Scouts, and it also didn't have the tools to go late properly and generate card advantage like Lux Zoe was ab able to do consistently. So um, over overall, I don't... I don't think this is one that I would I would revisit, and it, it, it felt like it was just kind of kind of middling. Couldn't get under people, but also couldn't go over the top and grind. All right, what are we what are we doing next? Oh yeah, this one this one looks good. This is this deck I'm looking forward to the most today, I think. Although Zoeheimer is also good. It's close. It's close between this and Zoeheimer. 